All right, we just chatted with Gabe Ackes, Seth Coleman. Let's bring in the third guy here at Big Ten Media Days. That's Pat Bryant, Illini senior yes, wide sir. receiver. Here he is in the leadership role, in the vocal role. What's this like for you, Pat? I mean, it went by extremely <laughs> fast. Actually, scary how fast it went by, but you know, I always I kind of pray for times like this, just being able to be a leader of a program like this at, at this level. And I feel like it's honestly like a, a great opportunity that I'm going to take full advantage of. Yeah, I mean, what is your mindset when it comes to that? I mean, you've been waiting for this. How do you, how do you go about it? Is it just natural? Like, you take I mean, it or do you try to be aggressive with it? I mean, it's pretty natural. You know, growing up, I've always kind of been in that leader role, just um, playing football and just being good at the sport. I feel like I, I'm the one that can lead others because I could talk to – everybody you know what i'm saying it's not only certain people i can relate to i feel like i relate to everyone so you know i, I kind of attack it well coach b trying to get me to attack it a little bit more get a little more aggressive a little more vocal but i feel like it'll come off more natural as we get further into camp yeah what's that look like to be more aggressive and vocal in that setting? i mean it, it honestly allows me to be myself you know because before i was in i'm kind of in the background i was a little vocal a little leader but you know i kind of let the old guys do their thing so it's kind of my turn so i'm gonna take full advantage of it and just take control of the team and just make sure we have as much success as possible yeah i guess if you zoom out like casey did in that room i think did a really good job of being yeah. vocal and isaiah maybe a little bit more so how, how do you try to maybe find your footing when you have such established voices yeah i mean i definitely learned a lot from the guys since they were just coming in on uh, special isaiah isaiah's not as vocal but he, he leads more with his actions and Casey, on the other hand, Casey's very vocal. He gonna let whatever in his heart, whatever in his mind, he gonna he gonna let it go. But both of those guys are great players. I, I picked up some great things from them just being in the room, and I feel like I could just take great things from both of them, add it to mine. I feel like I'd be a great leader. When you guys as a receiver room have, have a guy who's drafted, then obviously Isaiah is a first team guy and signs with the Lions. Like, what can you take from those two? Not just you, but you look at your Canaries, Malik's, and all the way down the line. Like, what can you take from those guys? I mean, those guys work very, very hard. You know, they, they got where they wanted to be. A lot of hard work, especially Isaiah. He came from quarterback to receiver, that switch. You know, that's a, that's a, that's very hard to do, just to see his dedication every day and just see him perfect this crap as a new rock, rock, rock receiver in what, three years, two, three years? That's, I mean, that's exceptional. That's actually kind of hard but you can tell he's a very natural athlete and then Casey's just everything comes natural great body great hands great catching great uh mindset he's always ready to work so um and the young guys see that every day so I try to you know try to model those same things that they did so we can kind of keep the standard high in a wide receiver room at University of Illinois. Pat you've been a really productive wide receiver the last couple of years it kind of gets overlooked because of what Isaiah did and maybe what Casey, Casey how did. he ended his year yeah um but you have over a thousand yards nine touchdowns the last two years how do you have to take your game to another level? How can you take your game? To I mean, level? just you know, just just go up off off last year. You know, just just staying consistent, keeping a stable mind, and just keeping the main goal the main goal. I honestly say, just I mean, it's all, it's it's on me and I at this point. Just having that leadership role, being wide receiver one. I feel like I'm in a perfect spot. I'm gonna take full advantage of it. I'm gonna do as much as I can to help the team win. And then I uh, just want to reach my goal, get to the next level. So there's more change because Coach McDonald leaves, uh, goes to Ole Miss. Uh, and, Pat, you'd be a heck of a free agent on the college football market. So oh, yeah. take me through those days. What was that like for you? And what went through your mind? And what, what kind of kept you here? I mean, Coach, once Coach Gio left, you know, he kind of he kind of sat me down and talked to me, explained to me how things went. You know, it's college football, so, you know, people come in. Just like the NFL, people leave and, leave and go. But he taught me a lot of great things. You know, um, I feel like I established myself very well at the University of Illinois. And I knew that coming back, I'd be rock receiving one and kind of the face of the offense. So I took that into consideration. Also, you know, just going into the portal, I wouldn't have been able to graduate. And that's my main thing, you know. In our household, that's kind of a standard. So I already knew my mama answer was, <laughs> you finna stay and graduate. But no, nah, I mean, I feel like Illinois is a great place. Family's everything. And I just feel like I've been through so much with, with those guys. I, I just felt like I couldn't do it. You said wide receiver one a few times. Like it clearly means something to you, Pat. Yes. Like what does that mean to you to be wide receiver one? On a I mean, it, it means a lot. I feel like I, I work very hard to get where I am now, and I feel like I'm I'm, I'm gonna continue to work. Um, I feel like I have a lot more to accomplish, um, and I feel like I could I could definitely lead our offense because you know last year we had a slight production, but I feel like me being wide receiver one, I feel like I help all those all those other guys come together, and we can make something special happen. College football, some kids want to come in and have everything right away, yeah. right? But, like, your path is kind of like what, like a quote-unquote traditional, you know, a little bit and then a little bit more and more and more. <laughs> like, how do you kind of zoom out and think about your path from blocker, really, as a freshman to, to wide receiver one? I mean, nothing nothing comes easy. You know, my whole life I always worked for everything I had, to, had to, I've, everything that I've gotten. But I knew coming into college football, I knew my plan. I want to get on field as soon as possible as a freshman, no matter if I had to block kick return, punt return, gun or any of that. I just know I wanted to be on the field and make an impact. So just looking back on it now, I feel like I, I'm very proud of myself. I put in a lot of hard work. I've um, sacrificed a, a whole lot. And I feel like I've, I've came a very long way. 
What are your impressions of Coach Step so far? Coach Step, he brings a lot of energy to the room. You know, uh, Coach Gio, while he was here, he kind of set the foundation, gave us tools, you know what I'm saying, how to understand the game, make the game easier. And Coach Step comes in, he, he, he's more on details and understand what, what it takes to get to the next level, giving us different moves to put in our bag. Um, he starts every day with a prayer. He's very, very um, holy. And then other than that, he's just a great person, great personality, comes in full of energy, every, yeah. literally full of energy every day. He even tell me someday, all right, now, nah, Pat, you're going to have to get me up today because every day I come in, I'm ready to work. I get the guys pumped. We do our little chant before work, uh, before practice all the time. So he's a great coach. I can't wait to uh, spend my last year with him. I'm sure like, we just talked about like that that time when Coach Gio leaves and you're like, what, what are my options here? Like, What did Coach Step, like, how did he play a role? Because I imagine when he, he gets hired, you look into his background, all that, like, did that play a role? You want to know it's crazy? Coach Step actually recruited me um, yeah. out of high school at the University of Arkansas. So once uh, Coach B gave me that call, he was like, check this dude out. So I went I went on, uh, I looked him up on Google and all that. I'm like, Coach Step, that sounds familiar. So I go into my contacts. I find his contact. I'm like, oh, that's crazy. So I immediately call, like, maybe he got the same number. I call him, yo, what's up, Coach? He's like, Pat, Pat Murray. I'm like, yeah. He like, you still got my number? Say, like, yeah, I still got your number. Say, but since that first day I called him, we clicked instantly. Yeah. He's a great personality, wonderful guy, has a wonderful background. I trust in everything he teaches me. Well, you've gotten an up close look at Zachary Franklin, uh, who comes in from Ole Miss. Obviously, had a lot of success with Coach Winnie mm -hmm. at UTSA. What, what have you seen from him so far? What have you learned about him so far? Very hard worker. I feel like we have First day we messed perfect, perfectly well. He's a little quiet, but you know, coming into a new school like that, you don't really know too many people. So that was my main focus, just to get him to come in and be comfortable. So second day, I got him to laugh a little bit. I got him on my Live for Life team. So we competed a lot. Um, we work out all the time, get catches in. But he's a great person, great athlete, and I can't wait to play with him this year. You said you guys as an offense showed a little bit last year. You guys showed quite a bit of a offensively lot. Yeah, last yeah, yeah. year. So, so what's next? Like, how do you guys keep, as you mentioned, the standard and build on that? I mean, we keep the, the standard. We're going to keep it high every year. I feel like we just got to be a lot more balanced. You know, in the Big Ten, you got to be able to run the ball to be a successful football team. So I feel like that's kind of where we struggled last year. So I feel like we be, become more balanced this year on um, running at pass. I feel like we have a wonderful year. You, you talk. I feel like every year we talk, it's like, I, you know, I could play in the slot a little bit. You yeah, kind of yeah. put that nugget out there a, yeah. a lot. But, like, Zakari can too, and obviously Kanari, like, what kind of options do you feel like you guys have in that receiver room? I feel like that's what makes us a, a lot more a lot more violent on offense, just multiple players being able to play multiple different spots. So I feel like it'll be a very hard to guard as, of course, with Josh Vegan and uh, Lawfrey in the backfield. We're going to be real unstoppable. I can't wait to see. Uh, fans are excited about Malik Elzey. Uh, yes, sir. Wh why should they be excited about Malik, Malik It's Malik Elzey. He's, <laughs> I mean, he kind of showcased what he could do last year, but we know, like, from the inside, we know what Malik's capable of. I feel like he'll have a big – we have a, a wide receiver room full of, like, great players, and I just can't wait to see, the, like, the young bucks step up and get their chance to sign like I did when I was younger. What did Luke Altmaier show you last year? Luke showed me, like, uh, gradual, like, leadership. He came in, leadership, that was kind of our main thing, just to get him to – be a lot more vocal and as we went on in the season he faced adversity he fought adversity never never pouted always stayed positive great quarterback um first year in the offense i feel like he did pretty good so this would be our what second well first year having a returning yeah. returning starter quarterback so i feel like he had to do perfect this year um we had devito devito kind of we didn't really know what he had coming in, but coming back with Luke, he kind of showcased what he could do last year. And I feel like he ain't going to do nothing but get better. How have you seen him in the offseason? Like, how does the year two with a quarterback change can, anything for you guys? I mean, you can understand, like, like, the leadership part, what we really wanted him to focus on. We kind of got him, like, leading us, um, setting up, like, private workouts, just doing, working on time and the concepts. And uh, he even got the old line involved, because usually it'd just be the receivers, tight ends, running backs. So now he kind of got, like, the whole offense going. So you can see him gradually getting better and better. All right, let's have some fun. NCAA 25, uh -oh. how much have you played? You know what's crazy? I, actually, I was never a gamer. I was never a gamer. I literally didn't get the game. I didn't get a PS5 until NCAA was coming out. So, honestly, I've probably been on it. I actually was going to bring the game up here, but I was like, nah, let me lock in. I'm going to lock in. But I honestly played it every single day, literally. I got a uh, Road to Glory and a Dynasty. So, I got a two-star. <laughs> And I got a five star, but my two star not doing too good. He's still, <laughs> he been there three years. We just getting A's and B's in college. We finna graduate. How cool is that to to be in a video game? I mean, it's awesome. My my nephews call me every day, Uncle Pat. I go to touchdown with you, Uncle Pat, Uncle Pat. I mean, it's amazing. It's something like you dream of as a kid. You know, playing NCAA 14 not too long ago. I never would have thought I'd be on the game, but just having that opportunity to be on the game, play with myself, allowing allowing friends back home to play. I mean, it's it's, it's an awesome opportunity. You pay attention to the ratings at all? Ah, uh, I mean, it's 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 the game, so you know, you like, kind of have to a little bit. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. 
But I mean, ratings, as they continue to just week by week, ratings will continue to go up and then we'll just see where it goes from there. It's all part of this NIL. And I just wonder, like, because we talk, everyone talks about numbers and all that, but like for you personally, like how does NIL change? And your day to day, your your life, your family, all I mean, of that. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely changed a lot. You know, just giving me the opportunity, to just not only help myself, but also help my family, and then also help out in the community. This summer, I'm gonna uh, do like a a book bag giveaway yeah. just for the community, a, a champagne, and then I'm allow um, I'm gonna give money back to my high school as well to allow them to do some things. Yep. So my main thing, you know, I help my once I help myself, I'm a, I'm a giver. I'm known to give, so I just want to do as much as I can to help as many communities as possible. Well, Pat, we appreciate your time. Before we let you go. What, what gets you most excited about the start of training camp, start of the season in 39 days? Just going through those eight weeks with my brothers not too long ago. The summer workouts, all the grinding we did, I just can't wait to see what we could do. Pat Bryant, appreciate your time, man. Thank you all for having me.